Hello and welcome to this part 2 lecture where we're going to be looking at routing and also some organisational tips for the mixer. Ok so first I'm just going to delete the reverb that we put on the bass in the last video. So I'm just going to select the bass channel in the mixer and then go over to where it says Fruity Reverb 2 and I'm just going to click on the drop down arrow and go down to where it says Delete. And on default this pop up box will appear which basically reminds you you cannot undo deleting a plugin. So I'm going to hit OK. OK so now I'm going to show you how you can easily link up the channel rack to the mixer. So these drums have already been assigned specific channels in the mixer. However now I'm just going to assign them to different channels just to show you the process. OK so the first thing I'm going to do now is select all of the drum channels. So I'm just going to go over to the channel rack and then click and drag over the channel selector here. So the channels that have this green icon are selected. So now if I go over to an empty insert in the mixer, for this example I'm going to use insert 10, all you do is right click on the channel and then go over to routing and then channel routing. And here I'm going to select root selected channels starting from this track. As you can see here it's renamed each of these channels in the mixer. You can also see that the channel insert number has changed in the channel rack. Now if I play one of the drum patterns, so here you can see the drums have been sent to these new channels on the mixer. So this can be an effective way of keeping things organised. Something else I'm going to show you quickly is how you can move channels around in the mixer. So if you're on a Mac hold command or if you're on Windows hold control and then click and drag over the channels that you'd like to select. Also if you want to select a channel make sure you click on the top part by the meter and the name. Now we have these selected we can move them around in the mixer by holding alt and using the arrows on your keyboard. So now you can see they've been moved over to the left hand side of the mixer. And you can also see that the insert numbers on the channel rack been changed accordingly. Ok now we have these insert tracks selected, something else you might want to do to keep your project organised is create subgroups for your different groups. So at the moment our drums are going through these channels straight to the master. But what we can do is send these to an individual track before they go to the master. So we can do this by going down to the arrow of the insert track we'd like to send these to and then right click this and select route to this track only. And I'm just going to rename this insert here drum group. And you can do so by right clicking and then go on rename colour and icon and here I'm going to call this drum group. And now if I play the drums I can control the overall volume of all of the drums with this one fader. So what's basically happening is the signal is coming from the channel rack and then these individual channels are all being sent to the drum group. And we can see this demonstrated by the cable at the bottom of each of these tracks. So we can see here it's only going to the drum group. And then if we click on the drum group we can see the cable is going from the drum group over to the master output. So this is a great way to keep yourself organised especially when you're working with many different tracks. Another thing we can do to keep ourselves organised is add a separator line. So to do this we just right click on the channel and then go down and select separator which is under group. We can also do the same on the track next to this, so right click this track and then go down to separator and we can see there that we have our drums and then our drum group slightly separated and this can help keep things less confusing in your mixer. Another thing I might do is colour these drums. So I'm going to hold command on a Mac or control on Windows and then click and drag over the tracks you'd like to select and then right click and go down to change colour. 
So now you can see all the drums are the same colour. You can also change the colour of the group by right clicking on this and selecting change colour. And I'm just going to choose a similar colour. That one's a bit too similar, so I'm just going to select a slightly different colour so we can tell the difference between our drums and our drum group. Also remember, if you ever get confused over what a certain icon or dial does in the mixer, you can hover over it and the hint panel in the top left of FL Studio will tell you what it does. You can also press Function F1 on a Mac or F1 on Windows. And this will bring up the manual in the correct chapter. Okay, so that's the end of this part two lecture where I've gone over how you can route the channel rack with the mixer and also some organizational tips. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next lecture.